Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to talk about some problems that we had that we ran into when making this triple surround setup here, as well as uh, talking about how to set up an NVIDIA surround display. I actually got quite a few comments on how to do this. And uh, what I do recommend, if you're going to use a single graphics card like we did here, uh, get one with three display port outs. And so the 1070 Ti from Galax that we're using had just that. Now the monitors we have have DisplayPort ins, and it's pretty important because DisplayPort is just that interface that's so straightforward to use. I do prefer it over the others, as it, I've never had problems in the past using it. Uh, I couldn't imagine if you're using HDMI or if you're using DVI especially, you might run into some different problems, especially if you're mixing uh, DVI, HDMI, and in DisplayPort. I don't know what that would be like. Uh, but for what it's worth, we use three DisplayPorts and we're running it off a single graphics card and you just go into the menu after you've installed that it'll recognize three monitors and then you can go into the nvidia control panel and it'll just have the option there to enable surround and then you do have to fiddle around a little bit to get the monitors configured so your mouse can then just span over the whole three displays once you've done that you're good to go but besides that there was also some really weird problems that we ran into with this build and that was to do with the motherboard. And a weird thing that I've never seen before was we initially built the PC and I went to press power, like I was getting the B-roll done and I went to get the power button shot and it just wouldn't turn on. <laughs> and at this stage I was just, I was livid because the memory was lighting up, the uh, board looked like it was getting power. And so usually that means you might have a dead motherboard on your hands. And I said to myself, no way, this can't be possible. Because if it's a dead motherboard, I gotta go then pull like literally everything out of this build and then replace the motherboard. And so what I ended up doing was starting to go through the process of diagnosing problems. And this is where things got even weirder because on Ryzen, there is like a little bit of a weird hack that if you've got the power left on, and you insert a CPU, then it will turn the computer on. And so we tried doing this and the power just sort of drained out for a second and then went back on. And I was like at this stage thinking, yep, I've definitely got a dead motherboard because we tried taking the power switch out and sometimes the power switch itself on a case, it's very rare. I only usually have it happen on cheaper cases. The power button can be faulty and it doesn't turn on. In that case, you can change it to the reset button or you can use what I use and that's a little gold finger and uh, use that to short out the power pin and try and boot it that way. So we tried that first, didn't work. Then we tried inserting the CPU, that didn't work. And then I just said to myself, okay, I'm gonna try change the memory. And so change the memory around and uh, miraculously it worked. And I'm sitting there scratching my head like, whoa, okay, I've never had a board not boot. And then you change the memory over and it boots like this i mean i have had it happen before where it just doesn't boot but this is very weird anyway so we ended up changing the memory back to the vengeance pro and then it booted up fine so i was just left scratching my head but after that everything was then smooth and good to go but one other thing i'll talk about with ryzen is there is a problem that's been prevalent in practically every motherboard manufacturer across both the 300 series and the 400 series motherboards and that is when you've got an ssd installed and a hard drive installed at the same time and then you try to install windows on your computer if you install it on the ssd which is where you'd want to install windows because it'll be faster snappier etc it'll actually install the system reserve files on the hard drive and this happens so much and i'm like scratching my head again on why this is happening. But if you do have this problem come up, what you can do about it is identify it straight away by going into format hard drives and just seeing if C drive has your system reserves. If it doesn't, you may wish to reformat your whole computer because the only way you're really getting ahead of this is by reformatting your computer, unfortunately. I've tried doing a lot of different solutions, didn't work. Now, another problem that can come from that is also the uh, hard drive. If it's over two terabytes and it's got system reserve files on it, then you won't be getting any more than two terabytes of storage out of that drive. So there's another reason why you might want to reformat. So when it comes to reformatting the machine, if you do have this problem on Ryzen, what you can do about it is then just disconnect your hard drive when you're installing Windows, install on the SSD, once you're in Windows, everything's fine, turn it off, connect the second hard drive up, 
and then boot back into Windows, format it, and you should be all good to go. So now we got some questions about this build in particular on the video, and that was some really good questions. The first being, why would we use a Ryzen CPU on World of Warcraft, especially since it likes that single core, high uh, core clock IPC. And so you've got like a few people recommending the 8350K, uh, which is absolutely fine. But I found with this, I, I wanted to try Ryzen 5 on World of Warcraft. And not only that, of course, we've got the options there to overclock on a budget. And I wanted to see what kind of price performance we could get. Ryzen ran really well for World of Warcraft once you overclocked it. And more particular, looking at that Vengeance Pro memory, you have to get good DDR4 memory that goes to around 3200 megahertz at least with an XMP profile. If you've got that, your memory's gonna run really well. Ryzen's gonna be getting more performance. And then we've got the CPU clocked at 4.1 gigahertz. Now, taking it above that on a B350 motherboard like the Pro 4, it's a budget choice. So I wouldn't expect it to go to 4.2, even though it probably could. I wouldn't run it every day at those settings just because the motherboard itself isn't exactly the best. But also another good question that came out of that video was, what's the difference between the stock Ryzen cooler and also the H60? And uh, on this particular build, since it's a six core 12 threaded uh, Ryzen 12 nanometer CPU, it's not gonna be pushing out actually that much heat. But when it does push out the heat when you overclock it, it does need something better than the stock cooler to keep it under wraps. And so the H60 is gonna make a big difference over the stock cooler especially once you start going past 3.8 gigahertz, for example. Uh, so in this case, we're able to get that extra performance and use this cooler. And the great thing is, when you get a cooler like this, you can port it from build to build, or if you wanna to upgrade to an eight core 16 threaded Ryzen, then you've got the option to keep that under wraps as well if you overclock it. So I can recommend coolers like that, uh, more so not just in the sense that you're gonna get overclocked out of it right now, but you can also keep using it as the future go forward. And that about wraps up today's video. If you guys enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, we actually did get one more question about this uh, case in particular, the Spec 05, and the airflow on the build. And so if you are getting this case and you are putting higher end components than what we did today, then I would recommend maybe getting a couple of more fans at the front, even possibly some fans at the top here and blowing air out of the case because it will get hot with the graphics card inside, especially since it's not a reference blower model that's sucking air and blowing it out of the case. But we did have the H60s we saw in the temperature test and that's actually pushing hot air out of the case as well. So it's not only keeping the CPU cool, but it's also working to help keep the case airflow better than it otherwise would be. So we really didn't see the need in this case to uh, put any extra fans in. And when we were gaming, we didn't have any problems whatsoever too, even when we overclocked the graphics card. But hopefully you guys gained some insight on Nvidia Surround and also some of the problems that go on here behind the scenes. It's not always smooth sailing when it comes to doing these builds. I got really frustrated setting this thing up initially and it was just a problem that as I said before that I've never seen before. But also we did have problems trying to get World of Warcraft installed where we copied it from the NAS and it wasn't being recognized. And so I just bit the bullet. I'm like, yep, just re-downloading it again and then we got it working after a few hours. So usually it seems like Murphy's Law does hit me pretty hard. When something can go wrong, it usually does. With that aside, I'll catch you guys in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Also, the last thing I'm getting asked about after I did this setup video for some reason is this desk right here. And I picked this up when I was building the studio a while back and we actually hustled this table. So you, like everything in the studio has pretty much been like a deal. Uh, we got this for 150 Aussie dollars for the whole desk itself. And that was um, essentially like when I went to the stores, they were looking for at least half a grand for something that's like this thick and also of this quality. So when I saw this, I just had to pretty much put my hand on it, give it a nice caressing. And I realized it was really good desk. And so of course it was really heavy, but then we made a custom stand for it because the guy was only selling just the actual top itself. So the stands were like 20 bucks and then I've never looked back since then. So literally got an amazing desk for a third, at least a third of the price that you would get it for at the stores. I don't know what make and model it is specifically. I just saw it and I was like, yep, like this one and I'm getting it.